From the National Weather Service in Raleigh, it's Nick Petro with your routine Monday morning weekly briefing for Central North Carolina, uh, basically covering the period today through the 29th of May. And let's see, let's just jump right into what is another opportunity for severe storms. It seems like every time we've been doing these um, Monday and Thursday briefings, there's been a chance for severe weather. Um, <clears throat> so um, today is no, no, um, no, no different. Um, in fact, this, much of this May has been busy with severe weather. So uh, we're going to have a couple more rounds of storms and severe weather threat today, except this time um, the concern is not only showers, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, not only thunderstorms with damaging wind gusts, but there also could be an isolated tornado uh, or two, given the fact that we have a, a, a warm front, almost stationary front stretched across the area. And, and that's where rotating thunderstorms really kind of draw their their low level rotation from. It's it's in the midst or vicinity of boundaries that that helps to spawn the rotating rotation of low levels. They help get the the the, the thunderstorm to rotate. So uh, so anyway, we've got another good setup. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if we have to issue a couple tornado warnings today. Um, it looks like the best. The, the most likely place, and I'll get to that, some radar simulations here in a minute, would be across the uh, sort of the southern half, if you will, uh, of central North Carolina. But I also want to point out that some of these storms may produce some local flooding um, because we, we could see some downpours that are, number one, just plain heavy, and number two, repetitive. So, you know, there are some simulations that show up to three inches of rain could fall in some select areas. When I say select areas, I don't know right now which areas are going to have the best chance. In fact, I think that yellow for uh, the slight risk flash flood area is probably going to be extended across all of central North Carolina here shortly. So, um, so yeah, but you can see on the, on the left side, the dark green, that's kind of the area that we think will have the best risk for any type of, of severe storms. And, and as I go to the next slide, you can see... Um, 1115 in the upper left, there's the live radar. And then I go to simulated radar beyond that. So at 3 p.m., you could see that line of storms that is currently, let me get my highlighter here. See this line of storms right here? Cur this is actual live, what's going on right now, west of Columbia, upstate South Carolina. By 3 p.m., it's going to be from Charlotte down to just east of Columbia. And then by 6 p.m. this evening, it will have swept across the southern portions of central North Carolina and basically be from the triangle eastward. Okay. So that's by 6 p.m. But look behind it. There'll be another round of storms behind that. And that round of storms will also sweep through uh, nine o'clock. And then here it is at midnight. And then it's gone by overnight with just some spotty shower and thunderstorm activity across uh, North Carolina. So let me uh, erase my drawings here. And, and this is pretty, pretty easy to follow. You can see Again, what's live there across upstate South Carolina now is expected to move across central North Carolina between 3 and 6 p.m. this evening. The heaviest activity, uh, you can kind of infer this from the reflectivity simulations. The heaviest activity seems to be basically south of 85. And here's the 85 quarter. Yeah, and I know a lot of folks are saying, well, you use 85 in a winter. Well, we're able to use it here in, in May as well as a, as a differentiator between where the best chances for severe storms are at uh, versus lesser chance for severe storms. So if you're south of Interstate 85, that's that's the best uh, chance for to see these damaging straight line winds and maybe uh, uh, rotating storms that could produce an isolated tornado. And then this, even that's the case even with the second batch of storms here uh, later in the evening. It's mainly south of 85. Okay, so um, so anyway. <clears throat> As I mentioned, with several rounds of heavy downpours possible, uh, that's why we think we have a better chance for flash flooding, too. So this is what's possible. Damaging straight line winds, isolated tornadoes, and flash flooding. Those are the three main threats with, uh, you know, round one or round two uh, this afternoon or through this evening. Okay? So that's, um, I'll be emailing these slides out, of course, as always, but just wanted to convey the sort of the two-round two nature of this. 
and the fact that uh, you know heavy we're, we're going to introduce the risk for flash flooding into this uh, picture you know compared to lesser uh, risk for that with you know prior events we've had earlier in the month all right so in the big picture we've got uh, basically a stalled front we call that a stationary boundary um, and, and that'll set the stage for um, those potential for severe storms. And then that boundary doesn't make it too far to the south. You know, it might try to nudge a little bit southward overnight tonight. So I think we're going to see the chance for rain uh, continue into tomorrow. Um, it, it might push just enough south on, um, on, on Wednesday into perhaps into Thursday. Uh, but more likely Wednesday to uh, Wednesday, that is actually I'm getting my days mixed up here. Yeah, Wednesday, it may push just far enough south on Wednesday where um, that might give us a brief period of dry weather and, and comfortable temps. So uh, we do we do have rain in the forecast for Wednesday, but it's the lowest chance of the entire week. Uh, and, and, and there is indication that Wednesday could be entirely dry uh, because of that boundary being farther to the south. And then late in the week, when the next front approaches from the west, it'll draw that first boundary back to the north as a warm front. So we'll warm back up and get back into the chance for afternoon and evening uh, showers and thunderstorms. OK, so there'll be lots of opportunity for showers and storms this week. I think Wednesday will offer the best chance for nice weather. The good side, I suppose, is given the clouds and rain, temperatures will be cooler this week compared to last week. So um, much cooler, in fact. So we'll get to that here shortly. All right, how about rainfall? Well, as I pointed out, Wednesday is the best day for dry potential, but every other day there's a chance for showers, thunderstorms, and some rain. So when you add up the next seven days worth of rain, you know, we're talking two to three inches across a big portion of central North Carolina, and, and that should give us some much needed drought relief. All right, here's the excessive rainfall outlook. And, and if I could just boil this down into two sentences, this means Scattered flash flooding is possible today, and isolated flash flooding is possible on Tuesday. Okay, so today is the better chance for flash flooding, although than to than Tuesday, but but we still can't rule it out on Tuesday. All right, and then the risk for severe weather is mainly today. Okay, um, not to rule it out completely any of the other days, but today has the best signal this week for severe thunderstorms, and what we mean by that is damaging wind gusts, isolated tornadoes, okay? And again, after 2 p.m. through about midnight or so. And, and that'll be in two rounds of, of, of storms. All right, looking further down the road, it looks like once we get into next week, so the week after this week, we, we trend toward a little bit above normal temperatures and, and, you know, roughly, you know, neither above or below precip. So kind of no strong signals either way. All right, so um, maybe we'll get some relief for this drought. Here's the drought slide. Again, mainly confined to areas along and east of I-95 is where the, the, the biggest um, drought situation uh, uh, persists. So maybe we'll get some relief uh, in that, Hope, hopefully, hopefully. All right, so that rounds it up today, uh, rounds it out today's briefing. And if you look at the bottom, you're like, oh, my gosh, look at all that. Like, looks kind of nasty for this week. You know, rain, 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 rain. But uh, but it won't be raining the entire time. Wednesday, there's a 30% chance, but a, a good chance, a good portion of the day should be dry. Um, and you can see that um, today is probably the uh, the risk for, for um, the, the best chance for severe storms. Although, you know, thunderstorms will be possible any of these days. The last thing I want to point out is look at the temperatures. Um, warm at night, thanks to the cloud cover, and warm during the day, thanks to the cloud cover, or, or cooler during the day than what we've had, thanks to the cloud cover and rain chances. Okay, so again, scattered storms um, that could produce uh, damaging winds, isolated tornadoes, and flash flooding today. Um, again, things will get going here um, down toward the Charlotte region uh, and just in the southwest portions of central North Carolina like around two o'clock and then again, and then gradually working its way across central North Carolina, uh, two rounds of storms uh, through the afternoon and then again during the uh, later uh, evening hours. Okay, so uh, so that's the way things are uh, shaping up for uh, 
Uh, here it is for Central North Carolina uh, this 